we all know everybody wants a Python SDK. And temporal SDKs are a little bit smarter than your run-of-the-mill clients, right? They have state machines. They have a lot of logic, data conversion, interception, all sorts of other things that they have to do. So it's not necessarily easy to just put a little thin layer. So when they were developing the, when we were developing the TypeScript SDK, we built a Rust core so that we would not have to continually recreate the same state machine and logic and all the complexity. Well, now uh, Python is going to leverage that Rust core. So essentially what a temporal SDK is, is it's two things really. It's a client to communicate with the server and it is a worker to run your workflows and activities. And that worker can actually be broken down into two types of workers, right? You can run your activities, you can run your workflows. And then there are a whole bunch of ancillary things, interceptors and data conversion, exception management, and just all sorts of, of other little things. So what we've decided with the Python SDK is to break it down into a few phases. The initial phase, phase one, uh, which is already complete, is a full featured client and full, cap well, 99% capability for activity workers. So you can run activities in Python right now, just fine from any other language. So that might help y'all at Watershed. If you want to fire up a Python activity, have it, it works just fine. And, you know, create, a, um, invoke it from a TypeScript workflow, no problem. Um, and then, and I'll go through how to, uh, how it looks real quick here in just a second. Um, and then the next phase, the phase that I'm actively working on once I get off this meeting, is uh, developing workflow support inside the workers. And that's fairly complicated due to a lot of the things that we support with workflows. And then the final phase, which may not have a whole lot of user visibility, is about sandboxing those workflows in order to prevent non-determinism from creeping into your workflows, which is an important concept for us, but uh, may not be as visible to others. So. The completed, uh, right now we have version one alpha out there, right? The only version out there, it, uh, it is a full featured client and it contains activity support. And it's fairly simple to use. Um, basically, you can create a client by giving it where you wanna go and a whole bunch of other options that aren't shown here. You can start a workflow and you can wait on the workflow or signal the workflow or cancel the workflow or query it or all the other things that you expect a client to do. In addition to that, we have activity support. Now I shouldn't, hold on, I should just show how it looks in here. So an activity is basically just any function. Now we've actually changed this in phase two to require a decorator on top of this, but for the version that you would get from the Python packaging now, this would be it. So basically here's a very simple activity. Inside, um, and then I have a Golang worker that invokes this activity. So it, it's to show, because I don't have workflows inside of Python yet, it's to show that another language can easily execute and run activities, right? So you literally just create a worker. We uh, leveraged a lot of existing constructs in Python to be as clean as possible, specifically with async. So you could create a worker, um, this is a client executing that Golang workflow, and that will invoke this activity and return it. It's really that simple. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of, uh, there's a, a full featured client. So all the things that you could want to do with a client, um, and then a almost full featured with the minor exception of async activities, uh, which is an off, not very often used piece. Um, we have activity support too. That's that. And it's, more advanced than just normal, oh, look, you have an async function and it can run, it's an activity. No, we support synchronous functions. We even support multi-process functions and make sure that all of the pieces back and forth are pickleable. So if you have, you know, we support all the heart beating and everything that you might need inside of an activity. So it's, it's fairly feature rich. However, it is alpha and being alpha, means you might not want to marry to it. We're already, we've already changed some of the API and we'll probably continue to do so in this latest phase. So um, that's phase one. It's out there, it's alpha, you know, use at your own risk, but it works type of deal. And we would love feedback. Um, I'm, I'm not getting a whole bunch of feedback probably because people are scared of alpha and rightfully so, but anything that breaks, anything that doesn't feel very Pythonic, 
send it to me. We have a whole SDK Python channel inside of Slack. Um, you can open up issues on here. You can hit up our form anyway. So the next phase is phase two, and that's to get the actual workflows going, right? So here's an idea of a very simple activity and workflow. You have an activity, it does something. Notice the latest phase will add a decorator, right? And you have a workflow. And after much discussion in, uh, in the open, about whether we should use classes or functions for workflows. Due to the fact that workflows carry several other things such as signals and queries, it makes more sense as a class. Uh, we actually deviate a little bit from TypeScript here, but you'll notice that all of our SDKs, Go and Java as well, tend to do what's best for the feel of the language. And this uh, works best with Python. So essentially, here's just a workflow executing a local activity of say hello. I will note that you, you might see a type annotation here or there. Inside the library, it is completely typed. So um, you will get, this will um, automatically be inferred. This argument, this would fail a MyPy check if this were an integer instead of a string from this function. So you have full typing. And then there's, here's how you might, might run it. This, I just used a stop event because I didn't, didn't think of anything better. But, um, and here's a little bit more of an advanced workflow. So start a workflow. This one just constantly runs a greeting. And if it gets a signal to update something, it does. Uh, this is how you uh, handle a signal. Um, this is how you might handle a query. They're all typed. They're all clean. Um, we have more. There's more advanced concepts with dynamic handling of different things. But at a high level, this is how, this is how uh, workflow might look. In the future, we will look to sandbox this in an interpreter that prevents non-determinism, but there's a lot to be discussed around that. So at a high level, that's, that's basically it. I don't, I'll open to the floor for questions. Yeah, um, nice work, um, Chad. Um, yeah, if anyone has questions about uh, the Python SDK, now's a really good time, um, especially if the watershed folks are interested um, you're welcome to, to say hi, <laughs> uh, but no, no pressure. Uh, Robert asks if this is making use of SDK core. I think it is, right? It is. And so what, uh, so what it's using is it's actually using a PyO3, which is a Rust project that bridges uh, C Python with um, Rust. It, uh, right now we only publish wheels for a few architectures. So if you're using a Mac M1, you'll have to build it yourself right now. Sorry, we're getting our worker there. But um, otherwise, um, all the other common architectures are present. And Mac M1 will obviously be present very soon. But it's very easy to build, you know, and we use, we use poetry and other such things. But yes, it does use Rust Core. And if you yeah. migrated all your engineers to M1 recently, you'll find <laughs> that it is very easy to build. And I would love feedback on the difficulty of building it. Yeah. Um... It, you should be able to like literally clone it. And so long as you have uh, Rust present on your machine, like uh, basically just use Rust up and just like NVM if you're TypeScript people. Um, and if you have that present on your machine, a poetry install and you're done. It, it will take a minute because it has to compile some, some hardcore Rust, but it'll work. Awesome. Um, Okay. Well, I also I do I do like the attention that you're paying to types. Um, that's something that we care a lot about because we want to help people fall down the pit of success. Um, I, there was there's an interesting type issue with like uh, some bug that you had to uh, wait for to to finish or resolve. Do you want to discuss a little bit about that? I thought sure. I mean, if, to... if people are if people are curious about <laughs> that kind of detail, so yeah, we do uh, support types, but like TypeScript with JS. Um, Python people are obviously not required to use types and all of this will work just fine without. Um, but we support all sorts of inferences and we're basically at the bleeding edge of what Python type support, even though the whole SDK is 3.7 only we and plus, and we test on 3.7 plus. So if, so long as you're within that range, you're good. Um, yeah, I hit an issue where basically some languages allow you to extract the parameters of a function and then like curry a couple of off. Because for instance, when you invoke a workflow like this, 
Um, that's the class method, and that's not necessarily an instance of this. Therefore, the initial parameter is self, which is typed as this, but you shouldn't have to you know, have self there in order to get this first parameter. Unfortunately, MyPy does not support the latest PEP that has concatenate, which allows you to curry off a, a parameter from the param spec. So we just have a few overloads. So that's what I'm waiting on. But the PR is in process. They're, they're working on it. My, uh, the way I pitch this is we bend over backwards for you to have type safety, but also uh, a nice looking intuitive API. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> yeah, if this were, if this were an, an integer uh, and you ran a type linter in Python or using your favorite IDE, it would be like, run does not accept an integer. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we support, uh, our parameters support uh, Python data classes natively as well. Um, okay. Uh, uh, lastly, where do uh, could you reiterate where people can try out uh, whatever is possible to try, and then where people can find you on Slack? Sure. So um, I am Chad Retz on Slack, probably the only Chad, but yet the least Chad of all Chad. And um, in the SDK Python channel, uh, you can really, if you make any comment there, like if I even see you typing, I might show up. So any comment in the SDK Python, I'm happy to chat. Um, this is the primary repo. Feel free to give us a star. Um, and it has uh, documentation on how to get it. All your standard Python methods for obtaining your favorite libraries are supported. But again, we don't have all architecture supported. So you may, it may end up getting the source distribution and trying to build it. Um, and then we also have a samples project that has one whole sample at the moment for the alpha version. And that sample is to use activities from another language. Uh, so samples project, GitHub project, Slack channel, SDK-Python in the public Slack. Um, the, com uh, the community forums is also a way to get in touch. And we are actively, I just merged this this morning, we are act in active development of workflow uh, work.